My dear brothers and sisters, for the last six weeks or so, we have been in the month of fast. Today, Passion Sunday, we enter the Holy Week. Throughout the Lenten period, we have been observing the most important pillars of our Christian faith. Prayer. We have been praying. Intensified prayer. We too were asked during the Lenten period to fast, meaning not only abstaining from food as it is used to be interpreted, but also abstaining totally and completely from evil. We were also guided to do the work of charity. That is sharing life as it is. Sharing life as God has given to us. It is in these three pillars that is culminating today reasons for which Jesus is entering Jerusalem. On the first day of Lent, the readings of the church directs us to listen to the temptation of Jesus. And he was exactly tempted on the three areas of prayer, of abstinence, and of charity. And we are told he overcome this temptation. That is why he then accepted suffering for the sake of salvation. Today, on Passion Sunday, Jesus is presented to us as a victim, a victim of the underworld. And in the underworld, so many injustices has been given to us. And in the narration, we hear that at a certain point, Jesus will react positively. At a certain point, he keeps silent. This division of the two way of reacting to a situation is what makes Christ truly a savior. The victim of manipulation, a victim of intimidation, a victim of so many that you have heard. For us as Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, we are presented with a scene of knowing that unjust treatment 
to our fellow brothers and sisters leads nowhere. And that is where Jesus was able to stand for. Even in the position of his weakness. And he was able to stand firm because of his divine nature. Reminding humanity that you don't need to do this to your fellow human beings. You don't need to do it. And that is exactly what we need to take up in today's celebration. That the suffering of Christ, the suffering of Jesus, to free us from this desire to be corrupt, to be manipulative, from the desire of killing others, destroying others, to a desire to save, a desire to salvation. That is why we are reminded of suffering of Christ. Why should Jesus suffer? And in this case, each and every one of you will be asking yourself, why am I suffering? Who is making me to suffer? Where is my position? Am I a victim? Or I am a victor? What am I doing? Planning to kill? Or giving hand to help, to save? We are gripped into this situation. And with us Christians in this part of the world, where suffering is our daily bread, you cannot talk about suffering in this country. It has gone beyond. We have lost what we lost. And we need salvation. How do we go about this? Unless we follow the example of Jesus Christ, a humble servant of God. Humility. When he was struck, he did not strike in return. It appears cowardish. It appears humiliating. It appears incomprehensible. Yet, that is where salvation lies. In humility. Unless all of us dresses the clock of humility and accepts that God wills us to be free, to be happy, it is not easy to overcome the temptations we are going through. It takes a strength to say, my God, to say, my brother, to say, my sister, Many a times in this church I have been saying, why are our people suffering? Why? Do they deserve this? When it is started raining like this, and I'm praying in my, in my place, do I think about the people who don't have houses over their roofs? When you have food on your table, do you have time to think 
of a child, a mother, a, 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 an old man outside there who have no food. When you sleep comfortably, do you think about a brother and a sister who doesn't have sleep in his or her eyes because of uncertainties? I've been saying here several times, several times, and I continue to say, if there is one child in South Sudan crying, in the wilderness, in the forest, in the neighboring countries, in the camps, and wherever it is, with the tears, we shall have no peace. No way. No way. In your own house, when you are sleeping, and there is somebody crying, whether at the gate, or at the kitchen, or in the bathroom, you will not sleep. You will not. And this should teach us that there will only come peace to this house when that child is stopped crying. And the, a really owner of the house, the father of the house, will go to check what is happening. Even when a dog is barking at your gate, you will not sleep. It's a dog, yes, but he's barking. And you will not sleep unless you are another dog. Who knows the senses of that dog? But if you are a human being, you will, you will say, but what is happening? Why that, that dog is shouting? There will not be peace in that house because everybody will be saying this dog might have seen something wrong. Either a snake or a scorpion or a wrong person has come in disguise who has not been part of that community and he is in that position. And that dog is trying to communicate a message. So the cry of our people all over is not making us to sleep. No way. So, my dear brothers and sisters, they are crying in humility. They are suffering. We are suffering. We need to come out of this by following the example of Jesus. By following the example of Jesus. At times, he prayed. He was silent. He responded positively. During this period now that we are entering into the Holy Week, we need to ask God to put into us the spirit of humility. The spirit of humility will allow you to understand the position and the life of your fellow mankind. The position the feeling and the suffering of the people. And in this case, Jesus is saying, if I have to die to save this, be it because I want this to be peaceful. So we need to pray today and on as we have been praying in the last few weeks, culminating on this entry into Jerusalem, to truly observe our Christian, Christian duty, responsibility. We now have to apply this conscience, am I truly a Christian? Sometimes they ask me, Bishop, are really the people in South Sudan, all of them Christians? My answer is, I don't know. All of you who come to church, are you Christians? I don't know. Some of you are journalists. You are coming to follow your profession, like this one here. Some of you are...
coming to look for boyfriends and girlfriends. Some of you are coming because you are, I don't know what, I don't know. So my answer is, I, I don't know. It is only you who will come up and say, I am a Christian. And I do Christian things. What a Christian should do. Not what the bishop tells you to do. I try my best in my own limitation to tell you what I think the gospel is saying. Now, you receive it positively, negatively. That does not concern me. I baptize you with the water. I said here the other time, if it depends on me, I would have used hot water to baptize some of you. So that you remember. Really boil water. I could use it for baptism. So that when you are burned and you lose your hair, not because of certain, but because of baptism, then you will remember that that baptism was really too hot. And I need to remember it. But then since the mother church decides that all of us are to be baptized with the cold water, so my suggestion for hot water doesn't work. But what does that mean? It means that the message of Jesus Christ enters in each and every one of us should bear fruits. It should be seen. And it should be seen in each and every one of us. So let us take this challenge that we enter with Jesus into this Jerusalem that each and every one of us becomes not only the temple but a new person, a new humanity. New Jerusalem is you as a person. And that from here onward, I am going to crucify not a person, but the suffering, the sin, the difficulties that I am going through. I'm going to crucify the hunger. I'm going to crucify the sickness. I'm going to crucify the injustices. I'm going to crucify the, 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 the corruption. I, I said here several times that at this time, if you are a Christian and you are a thief, at least have holidays. Stop. Because Jesus is coming and telling you this is not the right way of doing things. And we should accept this new teaching if we are truly followers of Jesus Christ. But if we deny him as Peter did, what can Jesus do? So some of us are Christians, yet we deny our Christian precepts. We deny our responsibility. We deny our duty. Jesus was there with Jesus, with Jesus, the, the Peter. And indeed he said he, clearly, I, I don't know this man. Yeah, yeah, Peter. Ma, we saw you, the woman said, we saw you. He said, well, well, I, you are a liar. You saw somebody else. Maybe that is my brother, not me. So as Christians, we, we do deny Christ with our acts. So me in my place, if I'm a cook, I should be a cook who is a Christian. I used to tell the women, don't add the salt. Put it as it is required by that type of food. If you are a businessman, do the business according to the Christian business process. If you are a police, be a policeman, a policewoman, according to the directives of the situation. Don't go and do your own thing. Otherwise, you, you confuse the whole situation. And this is exactly where we are. So let us pray today, as Jesus enters Jerusalem, Jesus should enter each and every one of us. And respond appropriately to the desires of God, according to what God directs us. And with humility, pray. Pray for the success of the salvation. Play, pray for the success of the growth of humanity. That we need everybody to be saved. We need everybody to be happy. We need everybody to grow. That I am not a conspirer who always plan to destroy, plan to kill. Now we are, people are writing a lot of things about us. Hunger, I don't know what, what, when, when you go somewhere else, 
and, and people will ask you, we are hearing these people are dying of hunger and so on and so on. Our answers vary. Why? Can we not bring this under control? Where is our Christian responsibility? Where is our Christian duty? Live about your profession. But I am a Christian. And I need God to come in here. So let us pray together that this holy season, now coming to a close, all of us will rise above our personal grip to corruption, our personal grip to destruction, our personal grip to negative power, negative power. That is only, always, and often destroys to the one that grows, that grows the young, that grows the family. Resurrection, coming up, growing towards the new Jerusalem, towards the heaven. God has prom promised each and every one of us. May God bless you. May God sustain you. May God keep you. And may God continue to direct your thoughts, direct your hearts towards the new Jerusalem. God bless you.